It's time to put on our thinking caps and interpret the significance of what we've been exploring. Unless it explains, history is trivial. Did you discover anything unexpected this week that is worth being explained? In your explorations of Islamic and early medieval science, you encountered many different, sometimes contradictory explanations. Interpretations have varied immensely over time and continue to be disputed even today. To see how this is so, let's consider two common caricatures and misrepresentations of Islamic science in the Middle Ages. First, Pierre Duhem, an early 20th century French physicist, was also a pioneer historian of science. A century ago, Duhem wrote, There is no Arabic science. The wise men of Mohammedanism were always the more or less faithful disciples of the Greeks, but were themselves destitute of all originality. Duhame's interpretation of Islamic science, although perhaps typical for his generation, is no longer tenable. Imagine that Duhame is Rip Van Winkle and that today Duhame has risen again from a long sleep after nearly a century. He is a bit groggy and disoriented because of all the changes he sees in the world today and also because of advances in scholarship in the history of science. If you met Duhame today wandering around this university, how would you help ease his disorientation and confusion? What examples of the significance and originality of Islamic science might we explain to him to help him come to his senses as quickly as possible? Second, let's consider the common assumption that Islamic science flowered briefly during the Middle Ages but was not long sustained. In this view, the chief question about Islamic science is the problem of its decline. But to frame the discussion around the so-called problem of its decline presupposes that it did in fact rapidly decline before the end of the Middle Ages rather than being longer lived. Yet scholars now believe that vigorous scientific activity in the Islamic world extended up through the early modern period and into the 18th century although we do not yet know enough to describe it. These later Islamic scientific manuscripts remain largely unstudied and unexamined. Why do you think the assumption of Islamic decline predominates? That is, why do we not just suspend judgment until these later Islamic manuscripts have been studied? These two stereotypes the lack of scientific originality and the assumption of a brief duration profoundly shape modern perspectives of Islamic science. Finally, this week we also explored the history of early medieval technology. In his radio series, Engines of Ingenuity, John Leonard points to unexpected connections between the history of medieval technology and the settling of America and the American frontier. Leonard explains, the Old West provides such an accurate mirror of medieval life just because it was populated by free and inventive people adapting to harsh circumstances. The medieval mind, as it turns out, was what it took to open up America. Do you think Leonard provided adequate evidence to support these connections? Before your explorations this week, did you expect the Islamic scientific tradition to be so vigorous? Did you expect that science might be an important part of the story of the Middle Ages? Did you expect that the history of medieval technology might hold ramifications for understanding the American frontier? What is the most significant implication of what you have learned this week? What is your interpretation?